Hello, hello, and welcome to this episode of The Creative Pause. My name is Susan Padrone, and I am here with my co-host, who I will allow to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacey Fay. It's so good to be with you today. Um, we hope that this episode, as all of our episodes, offer you a time of respite or calm or connection into your day. Um, I know a lot of us are under some stress lately, so we hope that this gives you a sense of joy each time you connect in. Um, and we're very excited to today to have Maria with us to walk us through some hand dyeing techniques with natural materials. Um, and we'll introduce Maria in a moment, but before we do, we always get to our question of the day. So Susan will cue that up for us. So we always ask a question um, at, in every episode that we've done so far of the creative pause. And we always welcome our listeners, our viewers to take the time to answer the question as well. You know, think about it, journal about it, whatever you feel called to do in the moment. And today's question is what has been inspiring you lately? Um, and I always struggle with answering these questions, which is simply because Stacy and I discuss them and we agree upon them. And I'm always like, uh, what am I going to talk about every week? But I guess you guys are used to that at this point. Um, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, what's been inspiring me? I, I think what's really been inspiring me a lot lately is, um, you know, now that we're several months into, you know, just this major shift that's been happening within the world. Uh, I think what I've really been inspired by lately is how businesses, especially small businesses and fellow makers have been pivoting during these times. Um, you know, I, I just love seeing how people have been able to take that step back and examine, okay, what's been working, what hasn't been working, what direction do I need to go next? And seeing how people are tackling those obstacles and turning them into successes and wins has been really inspiring for me as a, another small business owner. So Stacy, what about you? What's been inspiring you lately? Yeah, for me, a lot of my inspiration lately has been kind of in the realm of painting. Um, and I say that because I never really painted before in my life prior to the creative pause. And then we had several guests on here that have shared painting techniques, watercolor and, and other uh, painting art forms, as well as hand lettering. And I've been inspired by those episodes to start doing that in my life. And the painting in and of itself is sort of inspiring me, the, the colors of it that, you know, I ordered some paints the other day. They arrived in the mail um, from a company called Beam Paints that makes natural, beautiful watercolor paints. And um, even just the aspect of opening the package and sort of like smelling it because it was wrapped in beautiful beeswax, uh, pa you know, coated paper and um, smelling it and seeing the colors. And, and then, you know, I'll, I'll use those paints and I'll try them out. And I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's, the, it's sort of being inspired by just this new art form and, I'm trying to make things for people with it, make little watercolor paintings for friends and family and mail it off to them. Um, and that's really been inspiring me. It's been, it's been pretty cool to kind of dive into a completely new art form. And uh, the Creative Pause gave me the courage to do it. So yeah, that's me. And Maria, how about you? What are you feeling inspired by lately? I am definitely inspired by summer. Um, I love this, my family, we love this season, um, most of all, probably. Um, but just, you know, the hydrangea that are blooming in my yard, the fragrance of them, the richness of color, vibrancy, um, is inspiring me um, to create more things, uh, to experiment with the natural dyes that I love using. Um, and also just looking out there and looking at, um, I'm inspired by the creatives that are, you know, painting such as yourself, Stacy, whatever you're, you know, you're, you're, you're creating yourself, Susan. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are, have really used this time to kind of, kind of draw themselves inward and create these incredible things that they probably wouldn't have had time uh, to do otherwise. So, you know, I, I guess out of, you know, something as so unfortunate as the pandemic that we're facing, um, there is a little bit of a silver lining for people to get back a little bit of time 
um, whether it be with their families or you know taking time to smell the hydrangea in the backyard or um, or creating you know just that time that you wouldn't normally have uh, with a regular daily workday life um, that's what's inspiring me <laughs> And that's something that I feel like Stacy and I have talked quite a bit about on the show is just how people are taking the time to find inspiration in other elements that they might not have sought prior to all of this and taking the time to experiment and play and create in ways that we might have been uh, to do busy or to whatever to anything to really just take the time and try it you know I know we've also talked a lot about being really caught up in not um, being perfect <laughs> the first try too and giving yourself the permission to try new things as an adult you know that's been a real common thread so I love that Maria you mentioned a lot of those elements in where you're getting inspiration too so I am going to do a, a screen share because I am going to share the wonderful quote that Maria shared with us today. So I'm gonna get that up and going. And all right, and her quote that she shared is, there are no rules. That is how art is born, how breakthroughs happen. Go against the rules or ignore the rules. That is what invention is about. I mean, how perfect, how perfect is that quote for everything we were just talking about? So Maria, would you mind sharing with us what it was about that quote that you, know, you feel inspired by or that resonated with you? Yeah, I, so I happen to be a huge fan of Helen Frankenthaler and I think that she was groundbreaking, um, you know, as a woman in her field um, and she definitely pioneered making mistakes, I, I think, in a sense of, of just kind of pushing boundaries that wound up creating art that was what she became known for. I mean, she certainly was influenced by, by the people around her that were creating um, all famous artists in their own right, but she really took, um, took what she had learned, um, took what had influenced her from other artists. And she just created um, boundaries that she could break and rules that she could ignore. Um, and she invented something, you know, that was her own uh, with color, um, which I'm very inspired by um, her artwork and how she used color. And I, I'm often influenced by some of the things that I create in terms of combining natural dyes together. So I feel as though I'm also kind of using some of what her, um, her, her rules to break things were um, in, in terms of like, oh, that doesn't go together. Of course it can go together. Here, let's try. And of course, sometimes things are happy mistakes too. So um, I love that, that quote of, you know, inventing. Um, that you have to kind of break, you know, you have to break through, break some rules um, and go against what people have always been telling you to do. Uh, that's why I'm influenced by her and I love that quote. Oh, I love that, Maria. I, it reminds me, I had read in a book, I don't even remember what book about, um, I think it was a book about parenting and they said that you know, <laughs> one of the things they did with their kids is that every meal time, they would say, what mistakes did you make today? Like, what did, you know, what did you mess up today? And that, that was what they shared in addition to gratitude at each meal. I thought, how brilliant, right? Like to raise kids yeah. up with that idea. Because yeah. um, I think as adults, we get so stifled by the rules of what we should or shouldn't be doing or what it needs to look like or, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether or not something's art, you know, what is art? Like it has to be a certain... Exactly. Uh -huh. What is art? Uh -huh. right? Yeah. Um, so I, I love that. And, and can you um, give us a little bit of an idea? What did Helen create? Was she a painter? What, what was her medium? So Helen Frankenthaler was a, um, a painter um, and she created these huge canvases and some small, um, but she just, um, you know, she would spread canvases out on the floor and take, you know, pints, gallons of paint and throw it down and kind of 
marry and merge colors together um, and and create these beautiful canvases, which were inspired by things like sunset or landscape. Um, but she just broke her brain and how her eyes saw things broke down, um, you know, these very realistic scenes into something very modern. Um, and so she's credited with, um, you know, creating artwork that was modern, uh, paintings, uh, oil paintings, but huge, again, huge canvases. Um, but known for her color and her vibrancy um, and mixing media as well. Um, so not just, you know, paint, uh, but using um, crayon and uh, pencil um, to kind of create these layered canvases as well. That's awesome. Thank you, Maria, for sharing that. Um, well, I'm very excited to have Maria Mario here with us today. She is an artist I met locally several years ago, probably two or three years ago, I'm not sure. And I'm actually wearing her work on my, my neck currently. Um, Maria does absolutely gorgeous, naturally dyed scarves and dresses and um, beautiful adornments for, you know, that you can wear on the body that are, you know, again, dyed naturally. And also she uses a lot of sustainable fabrics. So. Um, the business is sustainable, everything she creates is beautiful, and it's all done by hand. Um, and Maria is going to share with us today a technique for doing your own hand dyeing at home using avocados and indigo, and um, she's going to walk us through that. So I'm very excited about Maria. We'll share more about Maria at the end of the episode of where you can find her, um, but we'll let Maria take the stage and share with us um, her sort of interesting natural concoction here that she's using to dye her fabrics. So thank you so much, Maria, for being with us. And you can take it away. So thank you both for inviting me. I'm very excited. Um, and I was saying this earlier. I think what I am about to share with you all are two things that you can easily do at home. Um, one is super easy, and it's going to be talking to you about the avocado. Um, and creating a dye bath um, that you can do with your, with your, by yourself, of course, or with children. This is super easy, um, non-toxic, um, and uh, really just a beautiful uh, way to use food waste as well, kitchen waste, um, as a dye bath. Um, what I also am going to show you is creating a natural indigo vat. I only use um, Goth certified indigo and I only use a natural fructose fat. What is that? Um, Michelle Garcia is a famous indigo dyer uh, and researcher, scientist, and he created an indigo vat called the 123 indigo vat. Indigo, natural indigo, needs, uh, needs to be reduced. It's, not, it's one of the only dyes um, that is not dissolvable in water. Uh, so it needs to have um, a suspension, a liquid, um, and a reduction. So fructose reduces, takes the oxygen out of that dye vat and makes, and, and kind of just makes the indigo molecule come to life. And that's what winds up on your clothing, uh, staining it and making it pretty much permanent. But um, I love the, the uh, history of indigo. Uh, it's been in use for over 6,000 years. Um, and I'm sure every day brings new discovery that's making uh, that, um, that 6,000 year uh, foundation probably uh, old, old news. Um, so I am going to get started because um, we don't have that much time, but I'm going to show you dying my, with my two favorite combos, uh, avocado seed, uh, seeds, uh, pits, um, and indigo. Uh, first, to get started, eat a lot of, make a lot of guac guacamole, avocado toast. Um, we eat a lot of avocados in the house. Uh, the stones are the most important part of the dye bath. The, the stones, the avocado stones contain tannin. And what the tannin does is it, it adheres, it helps, uh, helps the color of the stone adhere to the fabric. So that tannin is a natural tannin. And this tannin from the avocado stone, if you've ever broken open, cut open the stone, um, actually has a little pink, peachy pink coloration to it. And that's the color that uh, you will create with your dye bath. So um, you can use these right away, or you can dry them. I've got a dried 
um, a dried skin, avocado skin. You can use as many as you want, but you need a decent amount of avocado stones um, to make a really dark dye bath. I would say um, anywhere between 10 to 30 stones um, in combination with the skins will give you a really beautiful, deep pink, peachy pink dye bath. Um, so make sure you, if you're going to save your stones, make sure you scrub them and clean them of all the flesh. You can see this is pretty clean. There's nothing green stuck to it. And as well as the, the skin is clean. And I use a spoon to scrape out any excess. Um, again, you can use these right away. You can freeze them if you have room in your freezer, um, or you can dry them. So we often leave these out on our windowsill to dry. I haven't found a, dif a difference in color, whether I'm using fresh or dried. So that's just to note um, for anyone just starting out, um, you're going to get a beautiful peachy pink. But again, have at least 10, between 10 and 30 stones or skins um, available for your dye bath. Um, so here we are with a nice amount of dried stone uh, skins and I'm going to just tilt my camera down so you can see this beautiful dye bath. Um, this has been sitting and I think that you can see there's this beautiful kind of peachy pink um, dye bath that's already started. And I'm just over the dot top here. And this is amazing. The beautiful, beautiful thing about the avocado, I just have to switch up here now, is that you don't need to do much to your fabric, whatever you want to dye. In order to, what you have to dye, though, is scour. So scour means a washing at the highest temperature that the fabric is. And use a neutral detergent. So don't use anything that's got any lightener, or brightener or bleaches in it. Uh, something as mild as wool light, um, even a little Dawn dish detergent, Dawn Blue dish detergent um, will do. And basically, what you're doing is you're cleaning whatever you're about to dye. You're cleaning any grease, any lifting any final stains out of that garment that you're dyeing, um, and prepping it for dyeing. So um, we have an old T-shirt, and I'm hoping that you can see this beautiful peachy pink. Let's try and get in here. Um, and it's really got this lovely little peach hue, um, and it's been scoured, um, and then put into the pot wet. You want to wet everything before you put it into your dye pot, and then put it in your dye pot and kind of put it around the it's kind of submerged Need more. Uh, Maria, your sound cut out and your video is paused. Oh no, are you there? <gasps> okay, is that going, okay. Um, we can do it again, yep. Okay, good. Okay, so um, so take your garment that, or anything that you're going to dye, make sure that it's wet, wring it out, um, and then pop it in your, to your dye vat. vat. Um, what you should make sure that you do is make sure that when you pop whatever you're uh, dyeing into the vat that you cover it with water. Covering, adding more water to your dye pot is not going to dilute the, the dye um, because the molecules are already there. Um, they're not going away. Um, they will adhere to whatever you're dyeing, um, so you don't need to worry about adding water diluting, um, and you're just wanting to cover whatever you're dyeing in the pot. So. Um, this has already been dyed, and I, I'm hoping that you can see this beautiful, lovely pink, peachy pink. Um, and I'm going to just step aside, and I'm going to show you a little bit of indigo. I have already started my, my indigo uh, vat starter. Um, basically, I've taken about one-third of indigo, and two thirds of calcium um, pickling lime, and three thirds of um, of fructose. So I only make a natural indigo vat, and 
that means that there are no caustic chemicals that go into making this vat. Um, it's a super easy vat to make at home. Um, however, I will say if you make an indigo vat at home, everything that you use actually for any natural dye, all of the implements that you use must be used only for dyeing, natural dyeing. Even if they're natural dyes, they still may, con may contain some substances or some chemicals that might not agree with others or, and may even be, um, you know, kind of not healthy in large quantities. Um, the avocado, as you can see, my avocado bath is in one of these steel um, bowls. I picked these up at yard sales, um, Salvation Army, Goodwill. So everything that I use for dyeing is only meant for dyeing. And I take it out of the kitchen when I'm, when I'm finished. So back to the indigo. Um, this is my beautiful jar of indigo. Um, everything is in a jar. I add a little warm water, stir to dissolve, cap it. Um, air is not kind to indigo. It winds up uh, taking away and reducing that indigo dye um, molecule. And you need that to adhere to the fabric. Um, what I've done is I've already taken my reduced jar of indigo and I poured it into a vat. This is my vat. <laughs> you can use a plastic container that you can buy at Home Depot. Um, you can use a stock pot. Just know that once you use that pot for dyeing, it's only for dyeing. Um, and plus indigo, it does stain it. Um, it's really difficult to remove the stain. And you can see my hands are kind of blue too, maybe. Um, but here is my beautiful indigo vat. And this is a really nice, healthy vat too. You can see that I've got a little bit of foam here. Um, that's the activated indigo. You don't want to mess with that or push it aside. I mean, take it away. You do want to push it aside when you're dying. Um, but you want to make sure that that's always there. That's the healthy part of your indigo vat. And that's how you know that you've got a, a, a working indigo vat. Um, along with this little purple silvery sheen. Um, I'm going to put on some gloves um, and I'm going to go ahead and dip into my indigo vat because I have something waiting for everyone. Remember this t-shirt? I took this and just kind of twisted it up and rubber banded it. Um, I have another pre-dyed t-shirt. I wet it out, squeezed out the excess moisture and popped it into my indigo vat. Um, just going to grab my tongs here so you can see. Um, and I've got this beautiful green ish tinted um, t shirt that's already been dipped in the indigo vat. And only for about a couple of minutes, the more dips, uh, the deeper your blue. Sometimes once is enough. Um, you'll take that out. I have a bowl I'm going to pop this into. And you can already see that the, um, it's already turned from green to blue just in the short time that I've talked to you. What I'm going to do now is switch this over to my sink. Oops. And I'm going to start rinsing. And the key is to rinse. I'm going to untie this. And, and as I open it, I'm going to rinse. And do you have to worry about that dyeing the sink at all? So I have a stainless steel sink and it's really, it, it cleans up pretty nicely. Um, a little Brillo will help remove everything. If you have a porcelain sink, it will stain your porcelain sink. Um, that's just a note to self. Um, but here you go. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see the, the variation in color between okay. the peach and the blue. It's oh, great, great, great. Okay, so I'm going to open this. Ideally, you want to open this under running water. 
Um, I've only done one dip here. And you can see the blue, the green is slowly turning to blue. So it's oxidizing, the indigo is oxidizing. If you can see that. And you just mm. turn that out. Too. And it really is this magical thing that happens with the oxidation of the indigo going from the green to the blue. So it's the oxygen that's hitting that indigo molecule. And as it reacts to the air, it turns it this into blue. Um, the reason for, for rinsing underwater as you open it up is that if you're dyeing anything white, it will fly. Maria, you muted again there. <laughs> Sure. Sorry about You'll that. Keep it running. Water. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll keep your whites white, your white areas white. Um, and as you're running it under cold water, you're also kind of getting rid of these um, the excess molecules. that these loose molecules um, that are, and I'm going to just turn this to myself and, whoops, I don't want you to see that. So. Oh, it's so pretty. Hopefully you can see that. And it's just, I'm going to just get some sunlight on this too, this beauty. Um, maybe, maybe you can't see it. Um, yeah, so you've got this beautiful, this is one of my favorite color combinations. And I use this on silk a lot too. Um, you just get these beautiful sort of soft, muted pink, peachy pinks with the blue. And again, it's super easy to do. So if you choose, just to go back to this beautiful t-shirt here, if you choose to just do avocado, you get this beautiful peachy pink. And the added bonus is if you would like to learn how to start an indigo vat, um, this is just a great way to sort of combine two colors, two natural colors. And that is that. Uh, one last thing, always wash your indigo separately. Um, anything that you put into the washing machine with it will turn blue. Um, your husband's t-shirt, your wife's socks, you name it, um, it will be tinted blue. So always wash these on cold um, and separately uh, so that the dye doesn't migrate to everybody else's stuff. So Marie, and, if you like threw in a bunch of your like other t-shirts and socks into your wash with your indigo stuff and just like wrapped it and put you know the <laughs> like rubber bands on it would that be like a, yes. a batch tie-dye kind of situation <laughs> in your washing well, machine? well that would be uh, that would be really great but that's a shortcut don't you want to get your hands deep into indigo um so the thing about the indigo is you really should be rinsing it in your sink um, under cold water until you really don't see any blue. You have to have some patience. So some of, some of you will be trying this and, and hanging over the sink and going, oh my gosh, it's still blue. Um, have some patience. It'll take you a few minutes to rinse, depending on how much indigo and how many dips you, you've done in your indigo pot. And when I say dips, you should take your item lower it in gently, don't splash around, let your indigo item sit underneath, hold, maybe hold it and massage it a little bit for about a minute, um, pull it out, have that drip bowl to catch any excess and um, put it back in. So every time you dip it, you make it darker and then you take it out, you let it rest and oxidize. Um, when you're done and you start to rinse, the more dips, the longer you will be rinsing. So you want to get rid of as much of the indigo that is sitting on the surface of your garment or your item that you've dyed. Um, it will not dye anything in the laundry other than tinted blue. 
Um, indigo is this unusual dye in that it does not saturate fiber, it sits on the surface. Um, so um, while it can, it will be permanent if you have done your dyeing correctly, um, it doesn't sit on the surface. So you will have these loose molecules that tint things blue in your, um, in your washing machine, um, in your laundry. Um, but again, rinsing it under the sink kind of helps to eliminate that. Um, and that's, that's it. And I have a new t-shirt. <laughs> Thanks to my husband. <laughs> I really love any how, questions. I love how the pattern came out. I love the color combination. It's really beautiful, and it's a really thanks, exciting thanks, 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 process. Thanks to mo thanks to Mother Nature, right? Um, yeah. So I do want to say, um, if anyone is has any questions, um, I know that um, you can have everyone email me. Um, I'll also have some indigo uh, jars that are pre-mixed um, put up uh, on my site. It will just be pure indigo fructose fat um, with instructions for anyone um, who is eager to uh, learn a little bit about indigo dyeing. And I do have a tutorial on my website for avocado uh, dye baths too. So if anyone has any questions or if somehow I've missed, um, missed a step um, or didn't explain something clearly, um, please check back, uh, check my website. That's awesome. Well, we'll definitely link all of that to the episode page, but I do have a few questions. Oh. Brain is like on miles an hour here. Um, two questions, Maria. Can you reuse that indigo vat? And, and if so, for how long? Um, and then once you're done with it, how do you dispose of it properly? Like, is it okay to dump it down the drain? Should you not? So that's my question, set of questions. Maria, it looks like you froze for a moment. I'm not sure if you can hear us. All right, well, Maria is hopefully coming back on here in just a moment. Um, Zoom's, Zoom's been kind of glitchy for us today, folks. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> um, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is um, a really exciting project. I'm pretty cool to see what she did with the t-shirt and the fact that you could do it with scarves too, or you know, I imagine any kind of organic material is pretty amazing. Oh, and Maria will probably be back with us in a moment. She just got kicked out of Zoom, so <laughs> we'll give her a second. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to think of like the last time that I tie dyed or dyed, like fabric dyed something, and I feel like it's, I don't know, not since I was a kid, maybe, but I know like the whole tie-dye trend really like exploded and came back full force during quarantine. I feel like that's what everybody was wearing, like tie-dye t-shirts, sweats, like any, you know, all of the tie-dye things, um, or dip dyed or hand dyed and more and more people have been playing around with it. So it's, I was excited to have, have Maria on to give us all a little demo on her process, especially with using natural, materials to create the dyes. I think that's really fun. Yeah, I love to the organic nature of it. Like if, and I mean, I guess this is true of all tie dye that if you're rubber banding it, you don't really have an idea completely of what it's gonna turn out to be. Um, you have some control over it, but I imagine a lot of it's organic and, and not able to be controlled, which you know, I think is a good life lesson <laughs> that comes out in art form. So I love that. Oh, yeah. Seriously, it's definitely a life lesson that I think I just need to be reminded of constantly, if not like beaten over the head with, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's okay to accept things that are beyond your control. It's okay that, you know, you can just kind of play with whatever nature decides to allow to happen. But yay, it looks like Maria is back, at least with audio so far. So that is a good, good start. So we'll give her a minute to hop back on. There she is. Hi, Maria. <laughs> um, we're, we were talking about how um, the kind of organic uh, nature of the process, like you can't necessarily 100% control what it's going to look like. Um, you know, once you pull it out of the vat and rinse it out and, and open it up, I think that that's a great life lesson <laughs> in terms of this art form.
Um, yes. Sorry, I kind of lost you there. No, with my, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. My, my shoddy inter internet. Um, yeah, so I'm um, sorry, I missed your question, but or you were just commenting. Yeah, I was commenting, but I do have a question, Maria, which is yeah. actually, um, and this is when you cut out before, how many times can you reuse that vat of indigo, um, okay. if you can, and also how do you dispose of it? Okay, so um, if anyone is interested in maintaining a vat, your vat can stay, you can probably keep your vat for up to six months, um, but in doing so, you need to feed it. Um, so that requires that you feed it extra fructose. Um, now I purchase, um, I do purchase um, fructose crystals, but now is the perfect time for all of those fruits that you're, we can buy at farmer's markets and, you know, things that have, you know, if you have a few peaches at home and one starts to go bad, don't throw it away. Um, what I do is I put them into the refrigerator and then I make a mash with the fleshy parts of, of most fruits. Again, I can help anyone who's interested um, maintain that vat. Um, you will need some pickling lime uh, as well. Um, that's the calcium hydroxide. I might be getting that wrong, but um, you need those combinations with your indigo in order to keep feeding it and keeping uh, a balance in the vat. So it can go on if you maintain it for about six months. I've had them a little longer than that, but safe to say, um, you know, if you're not going to do anything with maintaining it, it'll probably be done within a day of you using it, um, maybe even afterwards. But um, about 50 grams of indigo um, will give you some dark to medium shades, and then you can progressively keep dipping other items like socks, uh, maybe some linen napkins into your vat, and you'll get some light blue colors. Um, when it's done, it's done, and you will know it. You will not. Um, you will not see any blue adhere to your cloth. And if it does, it's not permanent. Um, and when you go to wash it out, um, when you go to wash your, or, you know, rinse your item, you'll see that the indigo kind of um, dissipates, and um, it does. It's not permanent. Um, and as far as it being a natural vat, I have. I'm fortunate to have a decent sized backyard. We don't have an acre or anything like that, but I compost. Um, so I take my vat when I am finished with it, when it's absolutely what we call exhausted, meaning there isn't any more uh, pigment left in the vat. And I dump that vat into my compost and I turn it over. After all, it is a natural, they're all natural ingredients. Um, so it mixes in and it's fine. You can dispose of it down the sink. Um, a lot of the, the people and the websites that I that they post on that I follow um, will say to kind of cut and dilute with a little bit of white vinegar, um, about a cup. It kind of neutralizes everything, and then you can safely dispose of it in your kitchen sink. Um, so there's two options. Um, again, you can you can choose either one. Um, you can also decide. So this is what um, someone I admire, dog, the Dogwood Dyer does. Um, they take their uh, spent vat and they let it dry out. And at the bottom of that vat or that small cup are, is the residue of the indigo, which you can then, Stacy, turn into natural paints um, and inks. Um, I haven't done it, but there's a lot of information out there in terms of um, experimenting and kind of coming up with um, you know, some natural dyes. So um, if that answers your question too, in terms of how to um, use up your spent indigo vat, um, you virtually don't have to let any of it go to waste if you don't want to, um, and which is keeping with, you know, sustainability and all of that good stuff. That's amazing. I love that. Thanks for walking us through that too, because I know a lot of people will be thoroughly confused as to what to do with the vat of it, you know, when it's done. Um, Yes. Yeah, and I have one other question, but I don't know, Susan, if you have any others that you want to jump in with. Okay, so my only other question, Maria, I think was, um, are there any materials you can't use for this, or are, and are there materials that are particularly good with natural dyes? Yeah, great question. Um, so with indigo, you can dye virtually anything. Um, I have dyed... Um, but I, I mean, I am a natural dyer. I use only natural fibers, um, but 
indigo will dye just about everything uh, without any prep. The beauty of indigo, and I should mention this and backtracking a little bit, is that indigo does not require a mordant. So your avocado stone has a tannin in it, which is a mordant. A mordant in French means to bite, which means to attach to something. So a mordant will, is a, uh, you know, I use a uh, alum, um, which is a naturally occurring metal. Um, I make a bath using that, and I put everything that I dye into that a bath um, to pre-mordant, so to kind of prep it so that dyes adhere to the surface. Indigo is the only dye, uh, natural dye, that does not need that process. So you can dye virtually everything and anything that you that your heart desires, um, including I have I live in an older home, so. My wood cabinets are dyed indigo, pretty permanent. Um, <laughs> you can dye uh, basketry, uh, beads, wood beads, um, if you want to experiment even with straw hats, um, polyester. Um, I even had actually something, um, a um, kind of like a nylon cover, um, and I dyed it with indigo. I mean, it's not going to give you like super vibrant uh, blue, that you would get with a natural fiber, but indigo dyes just about everything, and including nails and things like that and skin. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Maria. This has been amazing, and I know that I'm excited to try this out, as, as I'm sure our audience will be too. Um, so we will, on the episode page, link all of the information about Maria and her website and where to find her, um, as well as her Instagram page where you can see all of her beautiful work. Um, and as Maria mentioned, she also has those sort of ready to go um, mixes that she'll, she has on her website. So we'll link to that also. So those of you who don't wanna go to the trouble of mixing it yourself necessarily, you can just um, get those from Maria. So thank you so much, Maria, for the oh. tutorial. This has been amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much for your patience for our, uh, my technical difficulties, but um, thank you again, really. Uh, for for inviting me and I love sharing um, and I loved joining you and uh, offering this to all of your listeners and something to try at home. Thank you so much, Maria. We really appreciate having you on. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you everyone who is there watching. Um, as always, we end with the galvanizing quote of what will you do with your one wild and precious life? So thank you all for being with us and we will catch you in the next episode. Have a good Bye. day.